What is up, everybody? It is a very good day. Got off work early. Fortunately, unfortunately, lost some money there. But going into this New Year's weekend, we have our coilovers to put in. Actually, that's not even the box. Where did I even put the box? It's the box. I'm losing my mind here. A little too excited. So we're going to pull the coilover levers out of the room, bring them out to the garage, make sure that everything's tight on them that needs to be tight. And then we're going to start on the rear, pull the shocks out, pull the springs out, get things done um, in the rear first and kind of like set height where we think it might be halfway decent. We want to lower the rear a little bit from where it is now. Actually, I'm going to take some measurements of that exact thing. I brought my uh, micrometer home get some, some measurements. Um, we want to raise the front about the same, about half the amount we're going to take out of the rear. So we just, we really just want the car to be level. We want to be able, the wheels to be able to be straight and not rub on anything, but as low as possible with that in mind. So also we got our DCC deletes in today from the Asian garage. So we're going to unbox those real quick and then get to work. Film the clip here for this other video. You guys will hopefully watch. But uh, we got our DCC deletes in today from the Asian Garage. Uh, check out the other video if you guys want all the details. It should be coming out the day after this video. But these things are super dope. They use clamps instead of uh, zip ties. You get the things built right into them. One year warranty. You can purchase an extended warranty. You can buy these individually. They're waterproof. They're aluminum, so they won't corrode. And uh, it's all around badass. They are less than well, just around half the price of KW or iSweep. And uh, even with the extended warranty, they're still cheaper than the leading guys. So this is awesome. It comes from a guy in California named Mark. He's really, really cool. Glad we reached out to him. Like I said, 10% discount on these with my code BR32YCE up until March of 2024. So buy some. All right, lads, we're out here. Car's jacked up. She's working on her shit. I'm working on my shit. This thing, we're getting this thing all together. I should have recorded it. A little feel here. We, we did the valve. What, what was it? We did a valve job on this thing. Went through and measured all, all the clearances and had to switch out some shims and we did rod bearings on it. What else you do? All types of stuff. Getting this thing all back to a prime gem. Got 180 something thousand miles on this beast. I still wish my car was this cool. <laughs> Sounds and drives awesomely. Anyway, we'll get the wheels off. We'll get one side done as a refresher. And then I'll show you guys how to do it on this side. The rear is rather simple. It's like three bolts on your control arm. Also your level sensor. Drop the arm down. Pull the spring out. Up top, two bolts for the strut. Swap. Put it back together. The front's. Definitely more involved. I don't know if I'll show you guys exactly that because I got all these different control arms and, and stuff up front. We got a lot of adjustments we got to make up front as well. And actually, while I'm back here, I got to adjust my camber a little bit too and the toe. So we'll see how much I actually record. But uh, I know you guys really just want to see the end result and the first drive. So we will just go with the flow here. So you guys, I uh, went one full spin out here. Uh, to bring the camera back out, it was at negative 2.1. I don't know, I should bring it to 1.5 ish, I think. Uh, obviously, we took the wheel liner out, a bunch of T25s, and then back here we got 18 mil. And you'll need a wrench on the other side because the clearance right here is not great. So, you actually need like an open ended wrench or an adjustable or something. Don't mind all my goo. Because I sit here and lube up all these bushings all the time. So they're always kind of ugly. But uh, like I said, 18 there, 18 here, 13 here for your sway bar. And the same thing on the other side. And you can see here I have them, lay them out in order. Outside, inside, 18, and then the 13. This middle 18 is the only one with the nut facing aft. The other two nuts face forward. And there also was, you might have these uh, control arm covers, two 10 mils in the bottom. And on either side, right here and right here, they have the little uh, push lock thing. So you have to get a little pick in there and pop them up. And then this thing like just twists off. So now this 
Well, if I pulled it hard enough, the control arm would come down, pull the spring out. And then on this side, it's easy because you can just go up there, grab those two bolts and the struts out because you already got the bottom one out. But you also got a connector on them. Got to mention that. Um, but on the other side, not so easy for the strut to come out. Uh, I can see that top bolt is hidden by, I forget what this thing's called now, but this is, should be a 13. And then you gotta like push up and pull towards you because the bracket that it attaches it is super dumb. Actually, hopefully they change it. I haven't obviously done it yet on this car, but the bracket that they use for this is really annoying and easy to break. So be careful on that. But uh, yeah, the rear, super simple. Uh, setting up the height, um, not going to be the most fun. And then adjusting my rusty, crusty uh, sway bar end links. Both, all four end links need replaced, honestly. But I uh, just don't have the funds for that. So I'm rocking like six-year-old end links right now that are just seeing all types of corrosion. But yeah, rear, easy. Ooh, back with an update. I am sweating. So... Um, this is where everything's set. I, uh, kind of just guesstimated on the spring. Cause I remember with my BCs, I put them like dead center and it was way too low. So I wound up going kind of near the top, like maxed out high and it was way too high still. So like somewhere in between half and top, maybe like three quarters, whatever you guys see it. And uh, we'll see how it looks when it gets on the ground. As for the strut, that was a whole lot of me lifting up this whole assembly by hand until this was about level, like the control arm. You can see it's still drooped, but uh, I held it all up and, and kind of just unthreaded it till it fit in. I probably take a little bit out of it, bring it up some to get that spring to not, not be as loose but it's a good starting point and i got the measurement of this strut to match it on the other side and i use this tool as well for that spring but um really it goes in quite easily you got your 16s up there oh the top hat let's talk about the top hat um getting them off the old strut is a 16 and if you pull down on the boot it's going to pop out of that that bearing or that bushing up top rather and then it's a 16 with an impact all you got to do is hold Hold this. You don't have to counter hold it. Just hold this with your hand. Hit it with an impact. They're not on tight. And don't over tighten them on the new strut. But we'll just take this. It switches to a 13. So we'll take this, plop it on there, hit it with a 13. Just snug. They don't need to be crazy or anything. You don't want to snap that shaft there, those threads. So um, yeah, now we're just going to match this side, toss this side in. As I was saying earlier about this doohickey, EVAP, whatever, it came off way easier than it ever has in the past on any Mark 7 that I've touched. So that's that. With a 13. Got these in. 16. Wanted to show you guys this. Your control arm won't fall down like this. I have a really nice spherical bushing in there that uh, is just really nice to deal with. But there's going to be a big old nasty hard to pull out rubber piece. Looks like this. Kept kept in by this it has like some edges that poke out the sides to keep that spring from falling so this one is dirt build up out of here but yeah so now we'll take the new one slap it down in there and the spring will go on top of that all right y'all fast forward in to the front we are getting situated i uh went ahead and jacked up the front about to pull these bad boys off got a lot to do found a boost leak i went ahead and did some other stuff yesterday found a broken clamp on uh this intake or this uh intercooler pipe right on the intercooler so that was good to find i uh had to trim down the uh, silicone right on the turbo there brought this over a little bit because it was slightly touching the brake booster giving me a little vibration in the car so you got that taken care of sorry i didn't get another clip of the backs uh, before i put the wheels on as you can see 
I might have added a little too much camber. It looks like it's like slightly positive now. So I'm going to go, I did like a full turn out. So I'm going to do a half a turn in and I forgot to adjust toe. I didn't kind of, I thought about it and I was like, eh, I have to see it with the car on the ground. So yeah, we'll, we'll have to deal with that later. But now we're moving on to the front. I said, it's the next day, but it's freaking freezing. It's 36 degrees. I think this might be the coldest morning we've had so far. And of course, I'll be out here shivering on the garage floor. So exciting. But uh, this isn't too bad. Like the way I do it, I take out the uh, axle bolt. I take off the brake, which is 221s. I obviously we're gonna have to disconnect the uh, end link there. We're gonna have to do uh, yeah, you see that bolt right there, back there? Yours will be different, way different. Um, in normal cars, there's like three nuts here. I would take those off and then uh, this one right here, take that one off. Mine's, well, I mean, I will take that one off. And the one back there, and then the one back here, you can't really see, center of the screen. Um, I'll be taking that whole arm off with the hub and the strut and then I'll pull the strut out of the hub and uh, slap the new one in and then put it all back in. And it's gonna be one big heavy assembly to get out of here. So that's gonna be fun. But it goes pretty quick and then I'll pull all the camber out of this arm here, this bottom arm. And then, yeah, hopefully that'll be good to go. We're getting to the point here. Uh, obviously, we have the caliper off and stuff. I just remembered. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, we have more work line goodies to put on here. We got these tie rods, tie rod ends to toss on. And I'm stoked. Totally forgot about these. Um, They're in my bag with my axle nuts. So we get to, it's a whole other dynamic we get to do. We get to, I just broke these loose. Now I'll have to screw these off. Counter, hold it back here. <laughs> do all that stuff excuse my sniffling it's quite cold out here we are so the strut is no longer attached to anything but up top we got the axle out camber arm caster arm tie rod we go went ahead and swapped the other one on like i said axle out you got your uh level sensor off again mine's different little bracket that goes to the arm yours will uh be a little different but it'll still be attached to the arm somewhere now on here you can see this this hole right there there's another one like right here um the second position adds 1.6 degrees of camber so we'll bring this up we're at 3.7 that alone will bring us down to 2.1 and uh then the rest of it's right here so i got a couple of threads i don't want to touch all this it's all goopy but i'll bring this in max in and bring that up and then keep the coilovers at zero. And then hopefully that's just a good spot for it. Cause I don't want to have to take it back off up top and adjust it. Cause I don't feel like cutting the tops. We'll see how it looks up there, but yeah. Now we just got to get these three screws from the top and this whole assembly will come out. We'll loosen up these three, bring this in, bring this in, and then loosen this up, widen this slightly and just pop the strut out. And then we'll do our measurements on the new stuff and then pop them back in. Pretty simple, not too bad. Once you get all the tools you need out, it goes by pretty smooth. I'm having to go back and forth and back and forth, but now I got all the tools out. This will be hopefully pretty dang smooth. All right, let's talk about spring preload for a moment. So basically what I did is spun this top collar until the spring did not uh, easily wiggle anymore. Then I brought the bottom collar up to it. Then I spun this again until I could fit this tool in between the two collars. And by that point, it's pretty much uh, as much as you can tighten this top collar, which is compressing the spring, 
by hand. Like anything further, I would need like, like a vise to be able to like just start cranking on it. And I would just add a bunch of preload. So basically you wanna just get this collar as hard as you can hand tight is what it comes down to. Um, even with like, like I said, with this in there, it's getting to the point of not being able to turn it. Um, everybody's strength is different. So I don't know if you wanna go off of, uh, like I said, just spin it until the spring isn't loose in here anymore. And then bring this up and then just spin this top one until you have the gap of that. And I learned that from, from Adam LZ and uh, Jimmy Oaks and other people doing coilover installs. Uh, I know they're drifty type boys, but uh, like I said, that's that's the good rule of thumb. That's what BC Racing says to do. And that's what I did on my last car as well. Um, didn't give me any issues. And I just, just right now locked them down. Don't know how high we're going to. Uh, this is where you actually adjust the height of the coil over. So you just loosen this one guy, and then you spin the whole body, and you're good to go. Like once these are tight, and this is loose, and this thing's installed in the car, you can actually just use either one of these tools to grab onto either one of these and spin the coil over up or down to get uh, your desired ride height. It's pretty simple. Then you just spin this one back down, lock it up, and you're good to go. So adjusting these really isn't that bad. Jack it up, take your wheel off, boom, unlock this one, spin, spin, spin. On the back, there's not even two collars. It's just, it's one collar and it has an Allen key in it that, that tightens up against the threads. So you just unlo loosen up the Allen key, spin in either direction, lock up that Allen key again, and you're good to go. They actually make those for these as well. You could get those Allen key types for both sides of this, but this isn't too bad. Now, once we get those uh, cold over condoms I was telling you about, uh, these will just stay pretty clean for their entire life. So anytime we'd have to adjust them or take them off to get rebuilt or higher spring rate or lower spring rate or whatever, it, uh, they should stay pretty nice. And we, we're, we're, in, we're in Texas, so we're not really worried about salt or a whole lot of corrosion anyway. All right, we out here. The other side is ready to be slammed in but I need the jack over here to lift up on the control arm to get uh, the camber the ball joint what are they called spherical boys in because the angle I took away camber so I shortened the arm and anyway I just need the jack jack it up a little bit pop those bolts in and everything else just falls right into place but uh, here we are on this side so loosen this guy up here it is a 14 triple square. Um, we'll pop that. And then what I did, I took this. This is a five mil. I kind of just tapped it in right here and then get my, uh, my ratchet and spin it so it opens this up. Give it a couple taps from the bottom and then it <laughs> works its way right out. And then I leave it in there, slide this in, turn, it, turn the five mil again, which takes the pressure off, lock it back up. You're good to go. This one, I, I matched the height of these and uh, we'll just go from there. Hopefully it's not too low or close in that way because we're gonna have to you know, pull the wheels off and jack the car up and do a bunch of adjustments. But we just want something relatively even, hopefully semi-close. That way we only have to adjust it hopefully only twice. I knew at one point today I would get stuck. Now I'm not as stuck. But when doing things like this, every almost every freaking job, there's always one or two things that kind of get you caught up. This one added a, a lot of extra time, but I knew it was going to happen because with these control arms and these subframes, the geometry, the geometry is so precise or the, the fittings are so precise. And with the geometry and everything, it, it makes things a little more difficult. For one, the control arm can move like all wazy daisy crazy. Uh, is the stock one, it's not on the spherical bushing. So it, it only has, you know, this little bit of movement uh, within that, that stock bushing. So that makes lining things up very easy. Um, with these, not so much. Um, so as I was jacking the car, the, the control arm up so I could get it into my spots here, this one still needs to go up one. I stuck it in there to give me, uh, you know, whatever. I wound up having to put this ratchet strap on because as I was jacking the car up, 
the whole assembly wanted to move out. So I had to lock it down, jack it up, and then sit here and align everything to get this guy in. And now it's in. But now I have to get this, this one out and raise it up. Hopefully it won't give me too much trouble because there's already, well, I should take some pressure off of this and then I should just be able to use the, the wood on the jack and just put it right up in here and bring it up to that second spot. And after that, it's gravy, um, hopefully, because this thing is sitting pretty high. So I don't know, but it is jacked up. So we will, sorry, we will see. I'm bad at looking at the screen right now. I'm just running on all caffeine and no food. <laughs> it's been probably five hours out here already. Anyway. Let's get this up and then do the other side with this same whole ordeal. <laughs> well, fellas, I don't remember where I left off, but I had a lot of fighting to do with these arms today. Like seriously, my ass is kicked. Uh, on the right side, I had to, on the camber arm, right? That joint was like, shoot, where did the camber go? That joint right there, the, uh, the threads into the arm were so rusty and it took me forever. I was under the car, basically doing a whole body workout, using the oil pan as a brace for my back. It was kind of freaking miserable. Why is this thing? But everything's in. Uh, I guess we'll just throw the wheels on now. We'll go for our maiden voyage here. Kaylin's over here getting the belts on. Got most of her interior put back together. We might both be able to drive our cars today. Well, she might. I definitely am. What else I gotta say? I'm just miserably exhausted. I have still yet to eat. I've been out here for like seven hours. Woo! Oh, I'm gonna have to like, see how big those are? I'm about to like cut this and they kind of stick out and that leather sticking back over. Small things, wheels, jack it down. So I haven't took the e-brake off yet, but as you guys can see, I could uh, stick my daughter in my wheel well. So I'm just gonna drive around, up around the circle real quick and back, and then uh, sit here at the end of the driveway and adjust these down and probably got to take some toe out of the back and I don't know we gave it kind of a an eyed up alignment on the front uh, the camera actually looks pretty good on the ground actually forgot about that so yeah with the toe toe still looks towed in a little bit on that side a little out on this side so it'll probably pull to the right I don't know take it for a two minute drive and get to adjusting that's crazy though. all right guys we're out on our first kind of drive with the suspension and like right here there's like a big bump coming up to this light and i wanted to see how it was and there's another one i'm about to bust a u-turn on my way back home and uh my goodness does it ever feel great like i'm on the the softest dampening there is but like just that feels like 10 times better than what I had on here, which is kind of crazy um, considering it was just lowering springs with, you know, the stock DCC stuff. But and you can see I'm not getting any lights from it either, but it won't let me turn off uh, traction. So <laughs> no lights, but we can't do any real racing. My uh, toe up front still kind of all over the place. The car just wants to kind of float everywhere so we got to fix that it's like real loose but so far so great i mean the ride height isn't where we want it at all so we're gonna go back and adjust that now this morning uh hopefully yeah pretty much gonna have to slam the fronts but oh well like a lot of these bumps were like terrible sounding this road is not great it feels good. It feels good. Shout out to uh, Equilibrium Tuning. Oh. So 
this is where we're at after basically our initial adjustment, like our first edit. This is where we're sitting. Looks pretty all right, but uh, the front needs to come down. We're probably gonna bring it down almost max, and then we'll just match the rear to that. As long as we don't rub, we want this baby low. Earlier with the tire tucking in the back, that's how I would like it. But I know with all the caster I have up front, um, yeah, we would definitely rub, so. Sorry about my voice. I'm so stuffed up and I don't know why. I'm not sick, it must be allergies. I don't understand. All right, so we're on a hill, so things look funny. This is not the actual ride height, but we used the level on this here iPhone to zero out the camber in the rear. I didn't even think about it while I was doing the fronts, but I'm not even gonna adjust those. They are staying where they are, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just not gonna touch them. Clearly there's way, 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 way less. There might be a freaking degree up there. I don't know, but I'm not about to fool with the fronts, but the rears, I think I got the toe all in check. You guys probably can't even tell on video. Actually looks like a little bit of positive camera. Well, like I said, I'm on a hill, and I jacked the car up so it gets all funky. This side, on both sides, front and rear on the driver's side is higher. Um, I need to get Kalen in the driver's seat and then measure it on a flat surface. This side, this rear run, I'm probably gonna have to lower a couple mils. It was like five or so mil higher than the other side. Like I said, I'm gonna go get gas, measure it there, and uh, yeah, just go from there. Hopefully the front toe's good the front was real loose and i adjusted the uh the end links up front and the toe so it's been a lot of adjusting this morning small adjustments it's kind of sucks because i don't have a whole lot of room in the garage with her car and then out here i'm on a hill and the road is like this side dips this way this side dips this way and it's one big hill so i don't know let's hope it's good we're here at the gas station look how good that looks right there that's perfect this right rear is at 72 and the right front is at 82. So we're gonna have to add preload to the spring on this side to bring it down to match the other side. This side is 77, this is 82. So we're gonna have to take, bring this down five mil and then they will be, the rears will be five mil lower if I do it right. So 82, 72, 75 and 77 I think over here so we just gotta do one more adjustment i think but it's sitting pretty good this side looks looks stellar i'm very happy with that just want to get them as even as possible and then the camber on this side is a little little negative compared to this side so we'll have to add some camber back here too it's gonna throw the toe off so we gotta do toe again but I think we got one more adjustment and we'll be good to go. All right, fellas, we finally selected our ride height. Tires tucking a little bit in there, let's get a 5X. Boom, perfectly. I wish I could get the fronts like that, but this is as low as they go. So it's a little bit higher in the front, but that's okay. It looks phenomenal. Give her a little walk around here. This view right about here, I think, is like the best. Nice and meaty back. I even took, I took a five mil spacer out the rear. And now it's like, it was like poking without it. So this is like perfect in the rear. The front could use better fitment. But hey, we're here for function, not form. But we still care about how it looks, right? But... We're not going to take that. We could take that lower collar out and lower it more in the front, but I'm scared I will start rubbing at that point. So this is where this is where we're going to kick it. We're going to kick it right here. It looks so good. That's it. She's there. Very happy, boys. Now I need a proper freaking alignment, and uh, we'll be ripping and roaring. Sitting here editing this video, I just want to go over a couple things real quick. The fronts, I wound up going max low, completely dumped um and the rears were about i'd started about three quarter and it, but this is because i have all these suspension different suspension bits and stuff but i would seriously i would start near slammed in the front and a little somewhere over, yeah around three quarters towards max 
max height tall in the rear for starters. I wasted so much time adjusting the fronts um, that it, I shouldn't have. That it was just so much time wasted. So start way low and then work, work your way up if you need to. But I, those are totally max low in the front and it's perfect. I've been driving around on them now for about two weeks and they feel amazing. Like it's way better than the springs and strut combo that I had on there prior. And uh, the Asian Garage DCC deletes working perfectly. Every mode, been launching the car. It's actually like 20 degrees out right now. And I thought I'd be able to go out and try for this 10 this weekend. Didn't happen. But next weekend, we're going to the drag strip. And the car's aligned. Everything's great. So uh, next weekend should be a real big, good weekend. Uh, next week, you'll also see my first impressions. We'll actually go over everything that I think about these coilovers. Um, good, bad, great, ugly. Uh, we'll go over that because it's already probably 32 minutes long. So you made this far. Thanks for watching. Uh, there's a link in the description where you can buy these. Uh, shout out to EQT. Love these guys. Great product. I am super duper happy with them. Just wait till I can go over all of it in the next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on a flip-flop.